I'm feeling quite smug because I've got a brand new material that covers my coal frames behind me. Now I'm sure most of you know that coal frames are very useful for any garden. If you want to harden plants off, you can put them in there, you can remove the covers during the day and you can put them back at night and it just helps them adapt to the outside temperatures. I also grow lettuces and all sorts of things in there. Now I bought these frames, these are Dutch lights, so these are basically a timber frame um, you can see the basic timber frame there. I bought these about 30 years ago and they were second hand then. And I think they cost me 50p. And they had three mil horticultural glass in them. Um, now this is the three mil horticultural glass. So it's a very thin glass and it does break quite easily. So over the years, I have replaced the glass several times, um, but I didn't think there was anything that was better than glass. But now I've discovered a new material and it's called ETFE and this is it. It's really thin, it's 100 mu, but it's strong. If I, if I try and rip it, I, I just can't rip it. And if someone was shooting in the field next door, rabbits or something, and a pellet went through this in my frame, it would just have a hole, it wouldn't stretch. It would just stay as that discrete hole. And then I could put some ETFE tape over it, stick it on and it would be repaired. So why am I so excited about this new material? Well, it's got lots of characteristics. To start with, things don't stick on it. So if a bird comes and poos on it, or if algae or dust, it's self-cleaning. So it just gets washed off with the rain and it just will not stick to it. The second amazing fact is that whereas in glass, the three mil horticultural glass, it only lets certain spectrum of light through. This lets all the spectrum of natural light through. So that means the plants going underneath it are much less stressed than when going un growing under glass. They have higher bricks levels and bricks is a, a value of sugar in them. They have more flavor, they have more vitamins. Um, and when they grow, they're slightly shorter generally because when they're growing under glass, they're slightly stretched. So they stretch up and they have a longer distance between the nodes and that's a sign of stress. So these will be shorter, stouter plants. And then when you harden them off, um, when you bring them out from underneath the ETFE, they harden off much easier because they've already become accustomed to the full light spectrum, so they don't have that shock. So it's fairly extraordinary stuff. ETFE has been used in industry for many years, and its first architectural use was at the Eden Project in Cornwall. It's been used in Japan for decades, but it's still relatively new for horticulture in the UK. Now, I came across it because I stumbled across Philip Lee and Philip Lee started RIPE and that's ripehouse.co.uk and for his PhD in 2006 he built the first ETFE greenhouse in the UK and so now he's starting to promote it to a wider audience so we thought it would be really nice to try it on my cold frames. Now you can't see it very well because it's frosty this morning it's quite cold so we've got a thin layer of frost over the top but actually because my frames were so old and it stretched when he put it on he had to actually strengthen them first so he put a bit of bar of wood across the middle and he put some brackets on the corners and he stretched it across cross and he's done the best job he could he couldn't get it completely flat which is what he would have done if we had had new strong proper timber sides not 30 year old plus ones um, but it's going to be really interesting to trial this um, and the reason I like it particularly is because it's so light if I compare the weight of this compared to the weight of this it's phenomenally different and that means if I was doing canopies outside um, for you to sit under I could put this over the top um, and it, I would needn't use such a big strong structure as if I was having to put glass on the top so I think it's got a huge amount of potential for me in outdoor structures I'm thinking of putting it on my Kida polytunnel on the top to let more light through because that is actually taking out quite a bit of the light from getting to the plant. So I'd rather have something that was much more transparent. And I'm thinking of putting it on the roof of my old greenhouse down there, which is a bit gaffy now because that must be 25, 30 years old and it was homemade from reclaimed things to start with. So all in all, 
I think this is an exciting experiment. The one thing I have found is that you get more condensation on the underside of this in the morning than you do with the old glass frame and the condensation therefore stops the light a bit. So they do recommend you put a double skin on and that then would remove the massive temperature difference between inside and outside and so that would help. But as far as its thermal capacity is concerned it's as good an insulator in terms of heat as the three mil horticultural glass um, but if you use a double skin then it's much much more efficient than the glass and in terms of cost it's about 10 pounds per square meter but i think with all things as this comes into use more widely the price will come down in terms of lifespan, it's guaranteed for 20 years. And the other great thing about it is we're all getting concerned about recycling and things like this, but this is totally recyclable and totally reusable. So um, because of its strength, its light properties, its heat properties, um, I think, and its weight, I think it's gonna be a fascinating new product to watch out for in the future.